There's people that are buying at these high levels and they're already down on a day that the stock was up 25% because they like to come in late to the party Why the smart money leaves the party before the cops come. If today didn't scare you at all, it should have. You're watching the Daily Stock Market Brief. My name is Michael Silva. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at multiple different indices, including all the stocks that are getting hyped up on about every possible platform, including Wall Street betters. I'm gonna show, hopefully, some eyes that don't know how to quite read candlestick charts that might still like use the line chart in Robinhood, just to show you how dangerous um, playing stocks like these are. Now, most of them finished up on the day. S&P 500 had a record close. The NASDAQ 100 had a record close. But we're coming into a period of seasonality where we typically see increased volatility. I got a lot to cover today. We're going to go over the indices. We're going to go over individual stocks, um, specifically the ones that are being hyped up. We're going to go over stock market indicators that are important. And then we're going to get into the dollar and yields as well. Let's go ahead and get into today's show. First, I want to start off by looking at a seasonality post-election chart. Okay, this isn't just me saying, you know, February time, sometimes you get sell-offs. No, we're looking at a seasonality chart, S&P 500 post-election, right? So the year after election. And you can see here in February, the blue line, boom, to the downside. Uh, you might want to see what it's normally like. So this is an S&P 500 index seasonality chart as well. And you can see here, it falls down into February, we get a run up and then we get a pullback. And this is a 20 year range, the time frame, And it's uh, dating um, basically 20 years prior to 1231, 2020. So it's pretty relevant. All right. Now, once we get into the individual stocks, you know, and keep going through the show, you'll, you'll get more of a clear picture as to why if today didn't scare you at all, um, it, I, I hope this video wakes you up just a little bit from this euphoric nap that it seems like everyone is taking. Now, first off, I want to show the IWM, the Russell 2000. It has just been on this monster move. But a couple things that I want to point out, even if we have big pullbacks, there's going to be lots of opportunity to come because you got to wonder, you know, how far could the market potentially drop? And if it does potentially drop pretty significantly, what, what will the Fed do in order to protect the market from continuing that drop? And what are the key levels to look out for? So first off, structurally speaking, the IWM looks uh, horrible. Yes, it, we had a strong breakout, but it's been a vertical move to the upside. RSI on the weekly time frame is super frothy and the money flow index too maxed out. This is, this is history in the making right here, folks. An, you know, an unstructurally sound pattern, bearish type pattern. If we start breaking down to the downside, hey, if we can even reach down to 170, 175, that should present some killer risk versus reward opportunities. And then we look at the S&P 500. This is um, one of the charts I went over in my previous market briefs, but I wanted to plan out ahead of time where if the market does roll over, you need to be ready to buy specific dips, okay? Typically, people try to pin the bottom and they try to pin the top, but really markets go up and down and up and down like this, like, like so. So you want to be able to find those specific dips to catch because they offer good risk versus reward opportunities. Now we'll get into the indices more in depth later, uh, but just note that this pink box is, you know, a very important target that my eyes are on in order to buy individual stocks and potentially add into more uh, positioning around the broad market indexes. And then also as well, the 50 period moving average, it's pretty far disconnected from the 200 and the 50, but the 50 periods at 3,700 so a reconnect to there would also make for a very good risk versus reward opportunity. Now, let's look at the market performance today. One thing that I want to call out is if you aren't involved like with watching, you know, the news and seeing the headlines and stuff like that, and maybe you just pulled open your, you know, 401k or your stock market portfolio at the end of the day and you're like, oh, wow, well, yeah, no, it didn't do too good I, or too bad. Actually, it looks everything looks pretty good. Um, you know, the stock market, the S&P 500 finished an all-time high, et cetera. And, and you don't see much movement in these numbers, right? Down, you know, a 0.12. So nothing, right? Up 0.36. So really nothing. There's no moves taking place here. But underneath and peel back that curtain, you're going to see a lot more. And we're going to talk about that. But first, also the sectors, these are the spiders that make up the S&P 500, right? So the S&P 500 has... Um, these sectors within it. And what we see here is a big bump in utilities. Now I've been saying, I expect a higher move up in utilities. And that's that would be because it's more of a risk off play. Even on my weekly scan, you know, I talked about uh, four different stock picks, right? AMC was one of them at around $2 and some change. And that 
ripped up. Um, and then we had three different uh, utility stocks and um, one of them, Dominion, or yeah, Dominion, I think it is, uh, ticker symbol D, is starting to play off really well. PCG, not doing too hot. And then I forget what the other one was. But what's important here to note is the uptick in utilities. Now, I already know a lot of people probably um, shorting in to utilities at this specific move up. So you got to keep that you know, in the back of your mind. But I do believe if we start holding in this 64 to 65 and over range, I think that they're going to be forced to cover, which is going to add more momentum into things like utilities. Now, we also saw a big pullback in uh, energy, but I also truly still believe that energy is one to really, really watch. We've been getting a little overextended by, um, you know, just moving a little bit too fast. So it's good to see these pullbacks uh, or moments of consolidation because they can offer a very good um, risk versus reward trades in the very near future. So now let's get into just the individual stocks and why I'm saying like, yeah, when you look at, you know, this screen, everything looks like that, ah, no, no price action. Well, let's just hop right into this, okay? First off, GameStop on the daily time frame. This, this stock is getting super hyped up, like to the max. Everyone is talking about GameStop. Let me just show you um, how critical and important candlestick charting is because people that look at line charts won't ever understand this. First off, if they look at a line chart, it says up 18% for the day. Amazing day, right? Well, if you look at the candlestick, you know, you can be up 18%. But you can be down a whole lot more, even on a day that was significantly higher. All right, so if I said, hey, if I told anybody on the street, hey, I bought GameStop today, the first thing that they'll do is they'll pull up their phone and they'll be like, oh my God, it's up 18%. But look at this long upper wick. What if I bought it here? 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 What if I bought it there? Right, well, we opened up here and we closed down here. From the top to the bottom, it was a 61.9% drop. Now, we didn't close 61% down from the peak, but we we closed like over 50% down or somewhere around that range. So that's, that's what I'm talking about. This right here, this wick, in order to create an upper wick like that, there has to be buyers. So people bought up in this range. So a lot of these, you know, Robin Hooders, Wall Street betters that don't know any better, they see a chart that looks like this. Oh, wait, that's BlackBerry. Dang it. I put the wrong chart up, <laughs> but but still, it looks the same, right? It looks the same. So I'll, I'll get into the other ones here in a second. BlackBerry was another big one, but it looks like a straight line going up. So they're like, oh man, I could get in because you know this and that, and then you get these really overextended levels. All right, so here's another one, CCIV. Super, super pumped up. Everyone's talking about CCIV. It's the stock to be. Look at how frothy the RSI is, right? It's like they're going to just this short float website. They're seeing what the highest short float is, and then people are forced to cover. Obviously, that goes short, and then you see these massive squeezes to the upside. This is not normal market behavior by any means, seeing movement like this. So, uh, you know, I, I want to caution everybody who's playing these stocks right now. Can they go higher? Of course, they can go higher. But just note what they can do in a single day. So if you're leveraged up to the max, you can lose it all in a snap of the finger, right? This right here is a hanging man candle. Look, from the peak, we went down up, uh, down 32%. We obviously bounced way up in the bull step right back in. We closed around 25, but the, a huge range candle, extreme volatility. But if you look at a line chart, you know, people are gonna be like, oh, I gotta get in because it's, you know, it's getting it's going higher and higher, not understanding the the structure of what this looks like and you know the technical readings behind it. So it's it's just very important to know. And then AMC, you know, we I called this one out, I think it was right down here actually. Yeah, it was this candle down here when I called it out. Two dollars and some change. I got out of my position with a 20% gain, which is great. And I tweeted today. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna post the tweet right here so you can see it. So I wrote here, it sucks watching my previous trades rip higher and higher after a complete exit of the position, even though I made 22%, right? But it sucks watching them move higher and higher. But I'll tell you what doesn't suck. It's knowing that my trading strategy is going to keep me in this game forever, okay? I'm focused on managing risk. My number one goal is not to get slaughtered in the stock market, right? Bears make money, bulls make money, pigs, they get slaughtered. So when we see AMC, look at from the top to the bottom, down 21.7%. Obviously, we bounced from those levels. Huge hanging man candle, overbought territory. Can it go higher? Yes, of course. I'm not saying that it can't go higher, but what I am saying is that there's people that are buying at these high levels and they're already down on a day that the stock was up 25% because they like to come in late to the party 
why the smart money leaves the party before the cops come. Ooh, that was fire, I know. And then you look at a line chart, it's straight up vertical, right? This brings in more and more people. They're like, oh, it's heading up. It can make another all-time high. It can maybe, what if it goes to a $75? And that's how people think. So you got to be careful. BlackBerry, this was the one that I was originally talking about that I mixed up the chart here, but a huge range, 24.5% from top to the bottom. It closed down from its opening point, which people might not think that that's a big deal, but it is. And it still shows 28.42% up on the day from this massive short squeeze. And people are still going to flood, you know, my my Twitter, my Instagram, my my TikTok saying, you know, BB to the moon. It's going to go to the moon. Look at this chart. I know what I'm talking about, right? It's straight up in the air, even though that the RSI is screaming, sell me. So you got to, <laughs> and, and by the way, I'm going to get a lot of hate for this video. People are going to be like, oh yeah, you're just saying that because you missed out on the gains. No, I actually captured a lot of gains, but I'm selling into these positions because I know better you know, not to try to tag a top or even let alone tag a bottom. And then you look at Bed Bath & Beyond. <laughs> oh my gosh, crazy. Look at, it was, it reached all the way up here. Imagine all the buyers, all the all the buyers in here that got trapped in this move down 36.7%. You know, I'm talking about the seasonality chart. I'm talking about craziness in the markets. This right here is extreme warning signs. This is what I've been talking about. Yeah, we're up on the day, but Guess what? Even though we're up 1.5%, you know, on the day, so it looks good on a line chart like I've been saying, heck of people in here are down on the day hoping that the price comes back. And this candle, look, it opened up here, went all the way up, and then closed down here. Can it go higher? Yes, it can still go higher. But I wouldn't, I, I, I don't want to put, you know, my hard-earned money on the line on these very, very volatile stocks unless if there was a specific setup that made sense to do it. Like for example, FUBO, the one that I've been saying, hey, this one looks good. I called it out. I forget when I called it out. Um, actually, you know what? I'm just gonna bring that up too. So here's ticker symbol FUBO. And you know, you can fact check this on my Twitter. I'm not gonna bring up the tweet, but I'll bring up the chart. I called it out right around here before the day was over. And the, you know, the next day we saw a nice big move. And today we saw an 8.6% move. And then I sold up here in this range. Um, 66% of my position up in this upper wick. So people were buying up here. And this is why I'm saying, you know, you need to know candlestick charting, but I was selling up here while people were buying my shares back, right? So it can still, this one, I still, it could still have some legs with the bullish crossover right here. And we just closed above that 40. Um, and it could still potentially head higher, but I dumped out 66% of my position and took in those gains from a point at $33. So you need to understand you know, you need to be able to take profits and not just put it on, you know, red and hopefully, you know, it hits. So I'm getting off track a little bit, but let's get into the indices now. We're going to start with the S&P 500 and we're only going to look at the daily charts today to keep the video um, somewhat short. Uh, hanging man type candle. We close still above this uh, horizontal area of support, 38.25, and we close at an all-time high at 38.59. So here's something interesting that I want to point out. The, the broad base index here still looks strong. Okay, we're just seeing some craziness happen in individual stocks right now. It came down, touched right around the 20 period moving average, bounced from that point for the remainder of the day and closed at an all time high. We're still above the five EMA. So can this go higher? Yep, this can still go higher. We need to get below the low of yesterday, 3,800. Let's say close below 3,800. That's right around the where the 20 period moving average is. And we also have to break this trend line, you know, that's heading over right in this, this range. And you know, you can visit back the first chart that I showed of the S&P 500 for if we do start experiencing some sell-off into February or March, you know, I mapped out those key levels that I'll be looking at um, very closely. Russell 2000, I, this is an indecision type candle, right? We pushed all the way to make a new time high and then we came all the way back down and then we came back up and pretty much you know, finished where we opened. So just a lot of price volatility within there, but we're still above the 5 EMA. We're still in an uptrend. Dow Jones, we broke down through this channel, right? But we closed back above it. So this now support line has been tested twice. The 20 period moving average held again too as well. And we did close below the 5 EMA. So it's showing a little bit of weakness, this lower trend line, which gives me kind of the feeling that it can break, but where can it break down to? Well, we still have this um, support right below us. 
And then we also have the price percent oscillator that did a bearish crossover. So probably not the best time to go long. That can probably go to bullish if we start getting back above the 31 to 50 and break out from this kind of consolidation period. Then we got the NYSE, same thing right here. We came down, guess where we tagged? We talked about this on the previous market brief. 20 period moving average was moving into this is what I said. And then we had this area of support as well. A lot of confluence, what happened? We bounced right back up, but we have a bearish crossover on the MACD and we closed below the five EMA. So we're pinned between the five EMA and the 20 period moving average. You don't wanna have the five EMA if you're bullish cross below the 20 period moving average. Um, that right there can signal a short term, um, short term to intermediate term start of a downtrend. Okay, we get this bearish crossover. You get the price action below the 20 period moving average and the five EMA that, you know, that signals like not the best buying opportunity at the particular point in time. NASDAQ 100 is another one that closed at an all-time market high. Hanging man candle. We got above this range, bullish crossover over here, you know, and we're above the 5 EMA. And what's even crazier too is we use the 5 EMA as support, but we close back above the upper Bollinger Band again. So just some overall crazy price action. You can see a big, large range candle, but it's not the healthiest looking candle uh, on a move to the upside because it showed that the bears had strength today. But the bulls did step back up. So, you know, credit where credit is due. Now let's get into the stock market indicators. The first one I want to go over is the XLU over the SPY. This is going to tell us, hey, is it going to be risk off or risk on going into next week? Well, we are still in a risk off environment, but we are we are flirting with a risk off environment. Um, sorry, we were in a risk on environment, but we're flirting with a risk off environment. You can see utilities right here um, relative to the SPY is starting to base out and go pretty flat right here. Okay, and then you look at the RSI, it's a positive divergence. We're starting to see the XLU pick up some steam here. So this could be the early stages of utilities showing some strength, but we need confirmation. We haven't got that yet. Lumber to gold ratio, we look at the 13 week rate of change. If you um, read Michael Guyad's white paper or watch the interview that I brought him on, you can Google Michael Guyad on the Figuring Out Money YouTube channel or just go in my videos and you can see it. If you haven't saw it, it's a good interview. Uh, we had a little bit of a downtick so far, but lumber has been outperforming gold. Lumber's been pretty volatile. So obviously it's been moving down, but then these last three or four days, we've been seeing it rocket ship to the upside. So we're seeing the, the rate of change kind of float around this level, at least for now. Then the VIX, the VIX today tagged the trend almost perfectly. I would call that perfectly. And we're still floating at a very higher range. We, we, we broke through this trend line, this for a very short period of time. And then today, boom, we moved all the way into that. Okay. And as soon as we tagged that, this area of resistance, what started happening in the markets? Well, first off on the move up to it, we started seeing a pretty aggressive sell-off. But when we hit resistance, that's a good opportunity to look at charts. And I posted this on Twitter today too. When I was looking at GameStop, it was coming in to fill a gap. All right, and I'm looking at the VIX and it was hidden into an area of resistance. So what I posted was, I'm not gonna bother bringing it up. You can go to my Twitter and see it. It was around GameStop, but it was it was, it was was coming in to fill the gap. And I was like, I love these like as for opportunities to scalp. I didn't scalp it because I didn't have all my equipment with me at this that specific point in time. But what we saw was in a very quick period of time, it was flooding around $60, 60 to 65, and it moved very quickly up to $82. So $20 per share move in relatively a very, very quick period of time. And why did it do that? Well, we're looking at the VIX right here. We came up into that resistance and then we pushed all the way back down, which pushed, helped push the S&P 500 back up and also various other stocks. Here is something interesting going on with the BPSBX and the BPNDX. Look, at we're making highs in the market, right? But what's this doing? Well, we're seeing weakness. We're seeing it drop down. Look at 4.92% down on this, on the point and figure um, buy signal chart, and then also down right here, okay? And then on top of all of that, as the market for the NASDAQ is making an all-time high, this rolled over and kind of broke this little trend line slightly. And same with the RSI heading down too. So that's that's a little bit of a cost for concern as the market's hitting all-time highs, but you're seeing you know, this get weaker. This, however, the NYSE high low index is still jammed up at a very high reading. So this is that's interesting to say the least. But when we get to these high levels, we typically see pullbacks take place, but this has just been ridiculously jammed, just jammed up. Another thing that to call out is 
we, you know, the breadth of the market, it's kind of, it's, it's been pretty darn weak. Um, as of lately, the market kind of drifts a little bit higher. We're seeing a lot more volatility. And today we saw a little bit of a spike down, but still it's, it's relatively weak breadth overall. The NAL, the new high low index, you know, we talked about this 2020 negative divergence, how the market, you know, got an all-time high right here. We took a little bit of a break right there, and then we made another all-time high, but with a lower reading on the null. And the same thing is taking place right now. Currently, doesn't mean it's going to hold, but this was a super high reading at 600, and we're you know making an all-time high in the comp uh, Q or the NASDAQ, and you could see here that it's a negative divergence taking place. Now, also another thing to call out is this is super jammed up as well. 93% of the stocks in the NASDAQ 100 are above the 200 period moving average. That is a high reading, a lot of breadth for this specific indicator. So a lot of stocks are very overextended from these 200 period moving averages. Now you can look at this in a couple of ways. You can be like, well, that's very bullish, right? Is the market's making all time highs? Or you can be like, that's a very high reading and I want to take it from a contrarian point of view that, hey, if, I, if I'm if i in the market, if I haven't taken profits yet, I can probably peel back some profits and then re-enter in at areas of support. All right, so for commodities, I'm not going to go over it. I posted this video yesterday um, with, uh, it, it was just basically around commodities showing relative performance. And what's important about what I talked about in this video was not only like, the stocks that could be performing, but I got into detail as to, you know, where to look um, specifically in the commodity sector and what countries to look at in a commodity bull run and when you have a falling dollar. And I showed specific charts of, you know, how well the S&P 500 did um, and from 2000 to 2008 when how like and i stacked it up to the dollar and how the dollar did so the dollar in short i'll just tell you it went down 40 percent in that time frame and then the s p 500 went up 94 95 percent but then i showed countries that um also benefit f- from a commodity bull market because they're heavy producers so if you watch that video i talk about some countries that i'm going to be keeping an eye on because they're heavy producers in commodities Um, Let's get into the dollar. The dollar saw a little bit of strength today, right? We broke out of this rising wedge. We're still in an overall downtrend, right? The 200 sloping down, the 50 sloping down. But I will say the very short term or, you know, intermediate term, the 20 period, we are currently above it. And, you know, we had a low here and a higher low right here. So really what I'm kind of you know, considering here is if we start breaking below this low, then I would say, okay, the dollar can have some stronger moves to the downside. But as I see it right now, and what I stated in the previous market brief, maybe we're seeing a little bit of strength. Yeah, it's going to take a little bit to get above the 50 period, but maybe, you know, it might take a little while, but we can get up to 92 and that's going to put pressure on gold. It's going to put pressure on silver. It's going to put pressure on miners. It can even put pressure on the stock market itself, especially if we start rolling over in March and we get this, you know, flood into dollars or flood into bonds where you see a sudden spike up here. So you got to be very careful with that. Let's hop into yields now. Uh, This is interesting. The 10 years kind of sloping back down, but we still have higher lows right here. All right. And then we have the 30 years sloping down. Um, but we still have higher lows. And then what I want you to pay attention to the, the curve, it's it's flattening out, right? And now we're kind of heading down a little bit. Yeah, it's putting in higher lows, but you know, maybe this is where the market starts to take off a little bit, you know, a little vacation, a little bit of a break, and we start seeing a little bit of a slowdown or a potential pullback because of the fact that the, 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 the curve isn't moving quite how it was. We're going to see it pull back here just a little bit. At least that's what it's looking like as of now. That can change in a moment's notice. But when I look at seasonality, when I look at just the craziness with individual stocks taking place, there's a lot of cause for concern, which makes me actually very, very happy to be in a in a very uh, good situation with uh, my current positions. Uh, you know, I'm very, very careful with the individual stocks that I'm trading. And, you know, most I have I have a large cash position at this particular point in time waiting to look for assets that go on sale. So um, just to wrap it up, I forgot to put a clue, conclusion sign here. But once again, I'll just go back over to the S&P 500 index seasonality. You know, we have history where February into March can be pretty rough months. And then we also have the the post-election seasonality chart, and we're starting to see some craziness take place, some massive euphoria take place in individual stocks, 
and and today should be a warning sign to many people but once again like i said doesn't mean that market's going to go down but what this does mean is that you need to be very very sharp and agile agile when it comes to trading or buying individual stocks okay this is not the place you want to go yolo at this particular point in time you may get lucky but you also just might get wiped out completely okay i want you to remember okay there's a difference between a line chart and there's a difference between a chart that has a candlestick okay the smart people were selling here the dumb money was buying here all right that's the that's the reality that's what this upper wick means okay dumb money was buying smart money was selling and then we i know for a fact we have people that are trapped up in these crazy ranges which is just bonkers to me because they believe that it's going to probably come back and it probably will but who knows you know who knows all right everybody i hope that helps out i will see you back on tomorrow's episode see you later